This is On The Tee with HMB, and I'm DJ Jones, Major Haversham's Lieutenant for Social Media. This week we are coming to you from the north coast of Ireland and the Castle Rock Golf Club. At the end of last year, I paid a visit to Castle Rock and sat down with General Manager Bert McKay, where we discussed all of the new and exciting things happening at the club, as well as what the return of the Open Championship to nearby rural Port Rush means for Castle Rock and the rest of the local area. We hope you enjoy the listen. Well, we're here at Castle Rock Golf Club with General Manager Bert McKay. Bert, we appreciate you having us at the club today and for taking the time. Before we kind of dive in, why don't you share a little about yourself? How did you come to the golf business? Okay, so my background was always into sport. I played to a reasonable standard, played off plus two, plus three uh, as a golfer, decided I was going to turn pro, uh, and then actually started working at Loch Lomond. Um, was there as an assistant pro right the way through to the director of golf. Uh, there for about 16 years and then the opportunity came about here about four years ago to be the general manager so kind of fell into it so to speak. Well there's no denying that uh, you fell into a great part of the world as far as golf goes. Give us a little intro if you will to all things Castle Rock. Okay so we have 27 holes, uh, 18 holes designed by Harry Colt and Ben Sears and then the nine hole golf course as well which was actually bizarrely built by our members and uh, there was a group of four members built it. Uh, we have about a, just over a thousand members um, and we're situated in this perfect golfing country. I mean, you have got Port Rush, Port Stewart, Bally Liff and all as our neighbours. So, um, you know, we're just, you know, made for golf, so to speak. Well, you touched on uh, your famous neighbours and the, the travelling golfer is certainly not wanting for choice in this part of the world. Uh, but what do you do at Castle Rock to try to help stand out in that crowd? <laughs> Yeah, ultimately we all have to work together. You know, nobody's going to make a golf trip based on one golf course. I think that it's the reason that they'll come here. You know, I think everybody loves to come to the North Coast because we have Royal County Down, we have Port Rush on our doorsteps. But it's working with them and making sure that people know that we're here. Um, we're a slightly different identity from, from both of them. I mean, one's an open venue and one's top three in the world. Um, and, uh, you know, as much as I think Castle Rock is a brilliant golf course, we're not top three in the world. I wouldn't even uh, begin to think that. But um, you know, we have a very family-friendly, orientated golf club. You know, all the staff have been well established. You know, we were talking about Alan, the barman, earlier on. He's been here for the guts of thirty years. Our green staff, I think the the, the lowest serving member of green staff is like five, six years. Everybody's you know fifteen, twenty, all the way up to forty years. So, you know, we have a well established staff, and they're very friendly, very approachable. And you know, you'll see us all in different areas of the building. You know, one minute you could be seeing me pull up a golf cart and trying to help the guys out. You could see Alan out in the golf course serving beer. You could see the girls in the office helping somebody in the pro shop. So from that point of view, we are a, we are a slightly different animal, but you'll always get a friendly hi and welcome and, you know, playing to our strengths. Well, this year is a pretty exciting time for this part of the world for some pretty obvious reasons that uh, we'll touch on here shortly, but uh, it's also an exciting time at Castle Rock. There's a lot of things happening around the club and on the links. Tell us a little about that, if you will. You know, I, I guess we're very fortunate. We have a forward thinking committee uh, and the council have really been driving towards us. So I came in four years ago and in the four years, our green fee uh, revenue stream is, you know, 112% up. So we've, we've changed the way in which we're doing things. You know, we're doing things more social media. Uh, and we were chatting about some of those things that we have been doing differently. We're breaking some of the, the molds and trends you know, our tea sheets are open two years in advance. But as far as the clubhouse and the facilities, yeah, we, you know, everybody wants to come to and play a great golf course. Um, so we engaged with Martin Hawtrey, who's done some of the best golf courses and Lynx golf courses specifically around the world. So he came on board last year. And then on October 16, we renovated six holes, uh, of which four new greens. Um, and then as you say, <laughs> while we're doing that, we decided, well, look, this bar needs a facelift, so we got it all redone as well. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of work going on. And of those changes taking place out on the course, uh, what would you say are the most notable ones? Yeah, I mean, it, the, he's, Martin came in and was trying to stay very true to what was here. He didn't want to come in and make big statements and make these six holes completely different. So a lot of it was trying to stay in keeping with the characteristics of the golf club. And I think the second hole was always probably the weakest hole on the golf course. It was a very bland uh, dog leg right. Uh, and if you were a visitor here, you wouldn't really know from the tee where you're going. Whereas now the shaping of the dunes, the new green, the new green complex with the bunkers, everything looks like it's been there for 
a large number of years. Um, so the second hole is now one of our stronger holes, whereas it was the weakest hole. Um, the 18th hole, we had a, a huge step in the green, which basically took out a third of the pin positions. You couldn't put them up about a metre on top of the ridge or a metre below. And because the ridge was so big, we were losing a third of our pin positions. Now he's put in there a nice green complex that there's a number of variation of pins. Uh, and then he's created some nice mounding and set off some stunning views across the coastline down to Port Russia and Port Stewart. So he's been very sympathetic to what was here and it's some incredible changes. Well, shifting gears just slightly, uh, we touched on the excitement in the area, which of course is the Open Championship returning to Royal Port Rush. What does that bring to the table for a club like Castle Rock? I, I think that, you know, it's not been here for so many years. Um, I think the people of Northern Ireland uh, saw how big the Irish Open was when it went to Port Rush initially. And everybody was amazed with how big the, the, the fan base was and the, the, the fun fair that kind of followed the Irish Open. The Irish Open's big, but unless you've seen the Open Championship, uh, and obviously coming from Scotland, I've, I've, I've seen a number of them, it's a whole different identity. Um, we're going to have so many people here. And, and the, the spin-off is, you know, we're already 90% booked for the week of the Open, um, the week thereafter. And I think it just puts the whole spotlight on the North Coast. I think there was a, a perception years ago that the North Coast probably wasn't the place to come and play golf. But you now have Port Rush, an open venue. You have, you know, Port Stewart, Held Irish Open, an unbelievable golf course. Our Glass, one of the oldest clubhouses in, in world golf. You know, you have Royal County Down, top three in the world. Depending on who's ranking, it could be number one, it could be number three. And then, you know, you kind of follow this coastline up here. You know, you have a, an unbelievable golf course here that is just a, a stepping stone. And then, you know, we're up in the Bally Liffin. So this whole north coast has really just been put on the map where it, where it does firmly belong, there's no question. And with so much great golf in the area, it provides, you know, the unique opportunity where the traveling golfer can come, unpack once, and soak it all in for a week or longer. You, of course, call the area home. What are some of the things you'd suggest off the course for visitors coming to the north coast? I think there's so much, uh, and, and this is what the North Coast really is is about. You know, the golf is going to be five hours of your day, but you know, you're, gonna, you're not going to go from the golf course to the bar every day. Uh, you know, you have, you know, if you're into the Game of Thrones, the Game of Thrones tour is up round here. It's filmed on the beach, 500 yards from the clubhouse. Um, you know, you have the Carrickery Road Bridge, stunning. You have the Bushmills Distillery. You know, you have the Giants Causeway there as well. Um, you then just have some naturally stunning views and scenery. Um, there's also some quirky little trips you can take out. You can go on little fishing trips with the guys early in the morning, catch your breakfast. There's some great producers of food and, and wine and beer in this area as well. So there really is a whole lot that, you know, I think working with somebody like yourselves, Avisher and Baker, can really put a, a bespoke package together that's not just golf and will highlight so much about this North Coast. Well, earlier you mentioned uh, that your tee sheets open two years in advance. Any advice that you'd give the traveling golfer uh, in terms of when they need to start their planning process for a trip to the North Coast? I think, it, you know, if you're, if you're booking your flight 18 months in advance, I think you should be booking your golf. I mean, ultimately, you're coming on a golf trip. Um, so for me, I think it's, it's crazy that you book your flight and then leave the golf to the last minute when the whole reason to come here is to play golf. Um, there's a limited number of prime time tea times. There's a limited number of good hotel rooms that you really want to stay in. So if you're booking the flights, book the golf. You know, all the golf courses in this area will work with you and work with tour operators. Um, you know, I just book it early to save disappointment. I know that's a bit of a cliche saying, but th th you know, there's no point in flying seven hours on a fl plane and not get a tea time. Um, you know, especially when we're two, two and a half years in advance on tea sheets. You know, the hotels in this area will take your bookings, so it just makes sense to book the golf whenever you are booking your flights. That's great advice. The earlier the better, no doubt about it. Returning to the links, though, uh, what are some of the highlights around the course, some of your personal favorite moments that the first or even repeat visitor should be looking for throughout their round? Okay, uh, as far as the golf course, I mean, I think that we have some pretty key holes on the golf course. I think that our ninth hole is a spectacular par three, uh, just over 200 yards, um, making a par now it's stunning, 
But I think the walk up the hill and getting a bowl of Irish stew or a beer is something the most rewarding thing of making a par. Um, so yeah, we have some pretty key holes or some stunning scenery as we've, we've already discussed. But I think it's it's not just that. I think having the caddy experience, I think that having some of our local caddies telling you some of the history about the course. You know, we have an area down on, on the front of the clubhouse that's a flat area that people probably wouldn't know what it is. Uh, it's the original f first tee of the golf course when we were built back in 1900, 1901 when we were founded. Um, and the first hole, kind of, you'd see up over my shoulder, goes up into the houses. Um, the land was then sold on. But there's the kind of quirky little stories that a caddy can tell that if you went out there as a four ball, you would never know. So I think having the caddy will always add to an experience. And that's the same and true on any golf course. Um, you're coming all this way, whether it's from the States or from Canada or wherever you are around the world, I think having a caddy only adds to the, the whole experience. But, you know, as far as some of the hidden gems, you know, I think, you know, it'd be remiss not to say that you go down to the Harbour Bar and you have a pint of Guinness with Willie and the guys down there. Um, you know, I think playing the golf courses, eating some of the little restaurants that you might not have seen before. Um, you know, we have the Angler's Rest, which is a lovely little restaurant just up the road. Um, and just making real use and immersing yourself within the local community. The locals will bring you on. I think there's the Irish welcome is, um, it, it's probably renowned around, along the world, but walking into any bar and just making yourself friendly, you'll hear a lot of great little stories. Um, but, you know, we're at such a stunning coastline that even the quirky ways to get to the golf courses, I mean, I jokingly said that the best way to get to this golf course, if you're staying up in the city of Derry or over in Port Rush, is probably by train. It's a scenic trip, it's along the coastline, um, and it's something that you're not really going to do. How often do you get on a train to go and play golf? Uh, yet we're 50 yards from the train station. Um, but yeah, I think leaning on the locals, leaning on where are the places to eat, are there any events on at night, that's what's going to build your experience. Well, we touched on all the exciting things taking place around the club. What's next for Castle Rock? What's phase two or three or whatever might be next? Um, you know, we're just enjoying the golf course just now, so we're enjoying the six hole renovation that we've had. Uh, I know that the plans are in, they're sitting in my office. Um, we're looking at potentially 2019, the end of, end of next year, uh, looking at going in and doing some of the changes. Some of them we're going to do in-house, uh, but this winter is very much consolidate what we have, um, improve on what we've got. And then 2019, yeah, we're, we are looking to to do some more stuff with the golf course, uh, keep improving. And I think it's it's like anything, it's like your own house. You, at some point, you're gonna have to repaint the lounge, you're gonna have to redecorate. So we're looking after our main asset, which is the golf course. Uh, and yes, there'll be some attributable things, whether it's in the clubhouse that will be done. But ultimately, I think just keep putting ourselves on the map um, and enjoying the, what is the juggernaut of the, the Open Championship coming next year. Well, on that note, and I'm kind of gonna put you on the spot, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be a busy week here, so you may not be there, but if you're in the stands on Sunday, who do you hope is the champion golfer of the year? For this year, it would be great if it was Rory. Uh, and I, as long as, you know, if it was a good European board, uh, it would be ideal. You know, whether it's uh, Rory, it's a Paul Dunn, it's, uh, you know, maybe Graham McDowell finds some new form, I don't know, but uh, a European at the top of the leaderboard would be great. Great stuff. Well, Bert... Thank you very much for taking the time and for the hospitality here at the club. But more than anything, we appreciate the memories you've helped make for the HMB forces through the years, and we look forward to many more in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And a special thanks once again to Bert McKay for joining us and for the hospitality at Castle Rock. If you'd like to keep up with the club, as usual, we suggest giving them a follow on their social media platforms. And if you happen to find yourself at Castle Rock, be sure to keep an eye out for their newly installed selfie stone on the 17th tee. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Thank you as always for tuning in. We'll have another one here for you soon. But until then, we wish you plenty of golf at its finest and life at its best.